and what made the difference for you guys? Um, you know, really, it was a really good team effort. I, I credit the guys for coming out ready to play. Um, we didn't have any big, huge lulls during the game. Uh, when we did go down a little bit, we came back with the same uh, efficient energy. And we had a really, it was, uh, it's a team effort, team win. Seven guys in double figures, that's a great win for us. We can get a lot of guys involved there when they came in, contributed well. Uh, I'm just pleased about the win. I'm pleased about our effort tonight, especially coming off the last game, just to come back strong the way we did against a team as good as this one. It, it speaks a lot of our character. What was it like just having every player available for the first time this season? Um, good. <laughs> uh, you know, it's something we haven't had up until now, but I, you know, it's obviously for me, it's a stressful time because they, you know, I was kind of thrown in last minute for this and then just trying to figure things out on the fly. But it's good just to know that we have so many weapons and so many people can contribute. I mean, like you look at even our bench scoring 15, 11, 11, 6, 18. I mean, that's that's a pretty powerful bench. I think that's something we envisioned at the beginning of the season and just see it beginning to come to fruition is a beautiful thing. Speaking of that, Coach, um, just getting Denny and, and Aaron and those guys kind of in at the end there, what were you, I guess, pleased about with the group that was on the court or what were you kind of trying to figure out in uh, keeping Denny out? Uh, you know, just... It, it, it's always going to be a delicate balance. And, and if I could sit in here, if Denny played a lot, you'd ask me about another player. And that's just the way it is because we're so strong across the board. And, you know, as we're flowing and things are going, things are going well. So we just continue to keep things going well. I mean, we're, and that's nothing against Denny. Denny's always a hard worker. He's an amazing person. I love Denny to death. That's my guy. Um, and we'll just continue to just do what works best for the team and try to figure things out. As you know, just alluded to, this is our first time really getting everybody together again. So now it's about us finding that perfect chemistry that's going to work for for us moving forward. And it, it looked like um, there was a lot of purpose behind everything. The last game, uh, Pat talked about wasted possessions. It, it looked like there was almost none of that this game. What was the big difference? Uh, well, we still had a couple. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, well, you know, the thing is, I'm always going to be the person that's like, how can we get better to play the next game? We have another tough one coming up, by the way. So, um, but it was just, I, honestly, I, I give much credit to our players. They came ready to play today. They, and the energy brought forth was super amazing. And uh, it felt like we always came with that. We, we, we give a punch, we take a punch, and we were ready to give one right back. And uh, that's a credit to them. And uh, I'm just pleased with what happened today. That's for sure. Philly is one of those teams that kind of um, gets players hot, I guess. Uh, how big was Trez getting to the line late in the game? Well, you know, Trez is the, uh, is the energy guy. We all know that. And so when he can get those type of plays and get those type of actions and just get the crowd riled up, I think he does a good job also for that for the team. You know, they see him out there and it's hard not to. I mean, let's be honest. I think anyone in this room, you see Trez do some of the things he does and you your heart starts to race a little bit faster too because of the energy and heart that he puts into it. So when he comes in and does things like that, it's, it's super big for the team for sure. And honestly, you put him out there with the, like I said before, MVP caliber player like Joel and you see him do some of those things. And now you get a little more excited. What did you think of Brad's performance in his first game back? I'm I'm totally pleased with Brad. I think that you know I think the numbers don't do justice what he brought to the game because even when he's not making baskets or giving those assists, he still draws the attention of the defense in an unbelievable way. Uh, it's very noticeable if you ever see him with the ball how much everything shifts in his direction and for him to handle that type of pressure and make the right play make the right passes play unselfishly Brad's an all-star player and he's an all-star person quite frankly as well and I think that that shows what in his style of play and what did you think of Rui's performance uh, his fifth game back he scored in double numbers. yeah I'm, I'm I'm happy with Rui I think he's still can still get better he's he's becoming more and more comfortable on the floor I think he'll continue to do so, um, especially just when he he catches up even more with the speed of the game right now. Um, and we all see it. He's becoming more comfortable every time he's out there, and that's what we want for him. So I'm super pleased with him. Uh, I mean, there's nobody that I can say that I you know I want to yell at tomorrow. So um, <laughs> if anything, I'm, I owe them all a cupcake or something. JB, defensively, what stood out in terms of your team's approach and and uh, want to today? 
It's, it's interesting because you look at the statue and you see Joel had 32 points, but the effort to put forth on him, I think that was a big thing. It was a team effort. You know, a lot of times, a lot of teams will get caught up in the me against him, me against him. And I think tonight was a thing we understood it was us against them. And we had to do what we needed to do, whether whoever was needed to come down and double was there to do it and who needed to scramble did it. And it wasn't about who was the person, but who was the next up, who was the next rotation and just doing the things we needed for the team. And just, it comes down to effort and, and just grit, right? What was, uh, what was your rationale about going with TB uh, after, I guess it was Daniel's third foul? Uh, was it to get Embiid further from the basket, given TB's perimeter shooting capability or... Uh, you're saying instead of Trez, I'm that's guessing you're asking me. That's correct. Honestly, yeah. I'll, uh, to be quite honest, I uh, went to talk to Trez to get him in, and Trez said, you go with TB. It was as simple as that. I think Trez felt that it was a good matchup for TB, and you know that's that's what good teammates do, quite frankly, and was, he did a good job of it, and it changed the complexity of the game, quite frankly. So I, I, as much as I would love to say it was my unbelievable coaching prowess, I have to say I actually just listened to the players. <laughs> how how rare is that for anyone? Uh, I don't know. I don't always. I'm I'm very very little times do I have control over that up until today. So. <laughs> what was it like for you just to you know experience, but just being back and handle that atmosphere? Um. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the best word to articulate it. And I don't think there is one, some some feelings, words don't do justice. And I think today was one for me, the, um, the honor of the experience. And then afterwards falling into the comfort of being there because I did that in the G League. Uh, you could, you know, you get kind of consumed in the game at a certain point and you no longer care where you're at. You're just doing what you need to do to get the team moving forward whether it's when I'm standing up as the head coach or if I'm sitting on the bench as an assistant coach, the job is still the same. You find a way to help the team as much as possible. Uh, obviously, initially, it's quite daunting. You walk out there and well, it's my first NBA game. Um, I'm not, like I said, I don't have the words articulated. You know, I just, to God be the glory. Amen. Should we be they drench you? In the locker room, uh, they got uh, Trez dumped a nice thing of ice water on top of me, so it was uh, my back is pretty soaked right now. Um, big ups to Brandon Mango for giving me another shirt to put on right now. <laughs> you mentioned Thomas Bryant, this was only his third game back, he played really well. Um, how much did you work with him during his rehab, and what was it like to see him have uh, a game like this tonight? You know, I, I initially before the season started in preseason, I got much more one-on-one -on -one time with tb and you know I, I i love tb he's a good guy he works hard he, he's willing to do what you ask him to do and you know he's um you know anyone that's ever worked out with me will tell you i like to talk a lot of crap when we're working out and get physical and just be all crazy on the court a lot and he responded so well to everything i ever did with him and he continues to do so and anyone who knows tb is a guy that plays with a lot of energy a lot of emotion a lot of hustle a lot of heart so it's it's, it's great to see him have the success today and on the court and just great to have him back on the court. You know, I, I, he, I don't know if I've, I've even talked to him about this, but I remember back when he was the South Bay Lakers in the G League, and I've kind of watched his development since then and seen him grow so much as a player. Uh, not known up until this year, I'm still very proud of the person and the player he's become. So, And I have to ask you about Kyle Kuzma's dunk on Joel Embiid. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that play? That's pretty amazing, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty darn amazing. That's about all I can say. You know, it's a, uh, yeah, yeah, spectacular. I hope he gets him on some Sports Center top ten or something for that. That was, I mean, let's say Sports Center top five. Come on. <laughs> Coach, as somebody who works at times with big men, what do you tell Gap um, yeah, against a guy like that? You know, it's difficult because Joel's a, a supremely crafty individual. You know, like coaching in Philly, I've been around him a lot and watched how he's done what he does to gaff to a lot of people just getting people in foul trouble and he's really crafty about doing it uh you just gotta do your work early and don't get frustrated you know that's one thing that joel thrives off the frustration of his adversaries so but you know it, it is what it is you know i'm not gonna i don't think gaff did terrible i think that it was just 
know, the nature of the game. And Joel's really good at what he does. Neil? Hey, Coach, is the decision to not play Denny something that you guys talk about before, maybe in practice, or is that something you come up with live? Uh, I think it's a little bit of a mix of everything. We're just trying to figure out how things go and how things flow. And uh, as uh, alluded to earlier, we have a lot of people out there right now. So just trying to find the right mixture and blend and give people opportunities that need to get a little bit more um, court time as well. And it's really hard when you have a guy that hasn't played much, like a Rui or a TB, for example, and they're finally getting in the flow and you're playing well, you don't really want to pull them out and not let them get more of a flow in which they already have. So um, it's just as simple as that. I think, if anything, you guys make more out of it than we do, or even Denny makes out of it, quite frankly. Christos? Hey, Coach. Congratulations on the win the performance as well. That uh, that performance, that 48-minute effort on both ends of the floor, but especially on defensive effort, what it, spe what it speaks, what does it mean for the potential and uh, for the quality of that group? Um, you know, as someone who's never really satisfied, I, I feel that we can still get better. I, but I think we show some strong glimpses of who we can be defensively tonight. There's still some, so obviously some things we need to clean up or we can't clean up. And I think that's we can say that after every single game we ever play. But um, I, I'm super happy with it. You know, if anything, I, I'm I'm almost I don't want to say I'm over the elation of the win, but I'm, I am because I'm always looking already looking forward to the next game and uh, want to make sure we can maintain this type of attitude, this type of energy, this type of character moving into the next game. Thank you very much, Kebab. Thank you. Wayne. Hey, Coach, congratulations on the win. You can say the energy kind of started out the gate with you when you had, you know, fist bumping and um, touch bumping the players. As a coach, when you get that type of energy going, um, you know, what does that say about the team? You know, I don't know. I'm a little bit crazy. So that's just what I do, bro. <laughs> uh, but honestly, that's just, honestly what I did before the game. I do that for every single game. And I'm not going to change my approach to the game, uh, whether I'm sitting down or standing up. And that's like my, you know, I, I feel quite frankly with this team, I have a connection, an individual connection with each one of these guys on the court and each one of these guys on the team. And I have an individual relationship. And part of that is that thing I do before the game. And that's not going to change. And I'm always a guy yelling and screaming before every game. I think any, any of you who have ever been to one of the practices or been around me after the game or before the game can attest to the fact that I'm usually the loudest person in the room already. So I'm trying to, I'm always going to be trying to pull that energy and push that energy forward. And what I don't get from them, I'll try to be my own, um, my own energy factory, as you say, my own power source for everyone around me as much as possible. And lastly, coach, when you have TB, Trez, and Gafford <clears throat> all clicking on centers like that, you know, what? what's the limit for these guys? Um, is that a one through 10 question? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it remains to be seen. I'm hoping there is no limit. I'm hoping this we can, we can just continue to thrive and in this situation, I think it's easy for me to sit back after a win and you're going to ask me that and I can say, oh, sky's the limit. We're going to be amazing. But in the end, you know, we're, we're still growing. The seasons, we're, I know we're halfway through, but as a team, we're still pretty infantile because we haven't had a full roster yet. So it still remains to be seen how, how great we can be. And I'm, I'm excited about it. Today's game gets me more excited about our potential, excited about the possibilities. So uh, hopefully we can just keep riding this wave uh, into another victory. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Last question to Penny. Hey, Coach. Um, my, my question is about uh, Danny and Davis. Uh, we saw Danny sitting out today, and the, the fact that he played every game since the season began has, has a part of it. Uh, and also about Davis, we haven't seen him uh, participate in the last uh, two and a half minutes. Is there a reason? Was those statements or questions? I'm sorry. Can you tell me what the questions. question is? What was uh, the, the question? question is, the question is, uh, why did Denny was out of the rotation today, D Denny and Davis, and also why Davis didn't play in the last uh, two and a half minutes? Uh, well, 
first of all, the Denny question I already answered. The DB question is, uh, you know, Davis is really just coming back from being out. Um, and I didn't think it was, after him sitting for a while, I didn't think it was the wisest thing to do to try to throw him in there at the end of the game. Obviously a very good win for you guys. Um, what was the difference? Uh, man, this was, a, this was one of our better wins of the season. It felt great, um, you know, to not lose or be in close games. And this is probably our first blowout win since maybe Memphis, maybe. Um, so, you know, it's, it's always great. You know, anytime you can play a game and um, get everybody in, um, reserves, everyone that works hard every single day um, that you may not know or um, doesn't get as many minutes as they want, they can come in and play. Um, you know, that's uh, that's a great sign. So, yeah, you kind of allude to it. This uh, first game where you guys have had everyone available and you see both Thomas and Rui play their best games yet. Just what was it like being part of this rotation as it was designed to be? Well, um, you know, one can't get ahead of ourselves, first of all. But at the same time, I think it was great. Um, you know, Rui's best game since he came back. TB, obviously, those guys having uh, minute restrictions and whatnot. But, you know, for them to come in, I know they've been itching all year to play basketball. And um, especially TB, you know, uh, you see what type of energy he brings every day, every night. Um, and, and Rui looked phenomenal. Uh, did a great job. Real, real poise. Uh, took the shots where... Um, you know, when it was there, he took them and um, no, play play well, play great defense too. Chief, how would you describe the ball movement out there, and why do you think it looks as good as it did? No, oh, no clue. Really? No clue. Honestly, <laughs> we'll see next game. But tonight looked good though, for sure. Was there anything uh, here today aside from obviously winning and hitting shots and going wire to wire? you guys can take forward the next game? I mean, we did a great job defensively. Um, I mean, that that's what you want to take. Um, you know, you want to take a lot of things. You want to take the ball movement. You want to take player movement, everything. But I think the number one thing is if we can, you know, just build off what we did defensively tonight, um, it'd be great. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, Tobias Harris, you know, three for 11, Cormas, three for 10, you know, those guys, you know, that's, you know, even, even Joel, you know, he had a hell of a game 32, but he had to work for some things. And, um, you know, that, that's all you can ask for. So, you know, if we can just build on what we did defensively, I'll be happy. How gratifying is it to, to get the win when Joseph Blair is coaching his first NBA game? Oh, that's big time, man. Um, you know, he, he has a hell of a story. You know, he was a Harlem Globetrotter and, um, just coached his first NBA game, got a win. You know, that's uh, that's phenomenal. Um, so I'm uh, definitely happy for him. Uh, what'd you make of your dunk? Uh, I owed him, actually, because uh, my rookie year, I tried to dunk on him, and uh, it didn't go so well. And, uh, you know, he came up to me after I told him that, but he told me if I did that again, he'll punch me in the face. So, <laughs> um, nah, I owed him for sure. Uh, you had that also the behind the back pass to Brad. How do you feel like your kind of like your no look passing has developed throughout the season? It uh, I mean, I wouldn't say no look. I would just say playmaking in, in a whole. Um, you know, I, I feel like I can do everything on the court: um, pass, rebound, defend, shoot, attack the rim, whatever. And um, you know, I just saw him at the corner of my eye. Um, you know, it, it was really about to be a terrible play because I should have hit somebody earlier and I got a tip, but thankfully I got it back. And um, you know, I just saw him so. That was great. Uh, you guys are on your third head coach because of the COVID protocols. Like, what impact does that have on the players? Just kind of last minute things like that. Um, you know, it does a bunch of different things because you just, just like as a player, you don't know who you may play with, you know, day to day. But um, uh, you know, now it's the same thing with coaches. You know, we're on our third coach, but um, JB uh, Joseph Blair, he did a hell of a job tonight. Um, Thought he had a lot of great poise, um, you know, did a good job executing uh, X's and O's and, um, you know, had good composure out there. So we did a hell of a job. Obviously, it's the next man up mentality from a, a player to player standpoint. But in this day and age, it's coaches, too. So, um, you know, kudos to the staff. How infectious was JV's energy? 
Uh, I mean, he, he comes in every day. Um, losing streak, win streak, uh, whatever. You know, he he's always animated. He's always screaming, getting hype, and um, you need that. You know, especially during in the NBA season because you know a lot of guys have a lot of energy, but sometimes you know that depends on outcomes and results. And for JB, he does a great job because it, it doesn't matter. You know, um, the saying "keep that same energy." He really does so. Um, you know, it's great for us. One more question about the dunk. Um, given the player game against him, he's one of the biggest and best rim protectors in the league. Do you think that's one that you'll remember for a long time? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't really dunk on people too often. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kuz, we'll go to Zoom for a couple questions and we'll start with Scott. What's going on, Kuz? I know this win probably feels awfully nice, and this is such an important day across our country, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, how special is it to play from a player's perspective, to play on this day and, and, and what this man stood for and the impact he had across our country? Um, well, I, I don't know about playing, but, um, you know, I think this is a very, very important day in history. Um, you know, obviously, you know, when you talk about Martin Luther, um, you know, a ph phenomenal man, father, um, and somebody that, that lived life with purpose. And I think today that's, that's the number one message, you know, living with purpose. Um, and especially in this day and age, um, you know, as kids, you know, it's hard to find, okay, what am I here for? What am I on earth for? Um, and this is a guy that is a great pillar you know, in our society and, um, you know, not in our society, but, you know, the whole thing and, um, just leading with purpose, doing something, um, you know, that's very, very impactful that changed course of, of history, but also, um, inspired people. And, you know, I think that's what this day should be about. You know, obviously you got the civil rights, you have, um, African-American, um, you know, certain things that, you know, go along with this day, but, um, you know, impacting lives and doing things with purpose. Um, I think that's what that this day stands for. So. Thanks, Kuz. All right. We got time for a couple more. Uh, Neil. Hey, Kuz. Um, this is the first game in Denny's career where he was out of the rotation. I know you guys have, you know, a bit of a relationship playing one-on-one -on -one and stuff. Do you say anything to him to try and reassure him or do you kind of just let him be? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I, t I told him after the game, man, you just got to stay with the process. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of times in this NBA, you may not play. You might, you know, and, and especially in this league, everybody is good. So, um, you know, it's never a down thing. You know, obviously you want to be out there. You want to be competitive. You want to play every single minute you can. But, you know, sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. Um, so, um, you know, he, he's a smart kid. Uh, he's probably going to the gym right now to work out. So, you know, that's the type of kid he is. So um, it's all about staying with the process because, uh, you know, especially in this league and as you guys seen this year, um, a lot of times when you're a backup, um, you're one injury away or one false test away from starting or one false test away from being in a rotation. So. Um, it's all about just being ready, being professional, and uh, just staying the course. And on your dunk again, I don't know if you've had a chance to see the replay or look at any of the pictures. Um, did you? Did that take you back any more? And you're like, oh man, that was even nastier than I thought. Or, uh, I mean, uh, I, I did look at it. Um, I mean, it wasn't that nasty, honestly. I mean, I dunked on them, <laughs> but I mean it wasn't that spectacular, you know, I'm half white, so I didn't really get up that high. And um, I just, I just glad I got there. So. Well, we just got to look at the positives of the game right now. Um, you know, we let one slip away from us, but coming back, I loved our resiliency and how we responded to this game, especially against a great team that's Philly. When you were out there going in the first quarter, were you surprised at all that uh, the way Montrez is going again? Uh, for me, I just try to be ready at all times, no matter when. Uh, 
you know, I know the last couple of games I haven't been going in at the start of the first or the second like that. So I just try to be ready as as many times as possible. Just try to keep my mind ready, my body ready for whenever my name is called. Did you hear Trent's uh, say that? No, I didn't actually. <laughs> I didn't. I was just trying to just try to wrap my mind around the game and you know try to stay focused and locked in. And the, and then can you do a oh, rose duck noodle soup with wontons? Wow. What you order? <laughs> yeah. That's on fire. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, what were your own expectations for your returning? Did you want to even like kind of set those parameters for yourself? Well, my expectations were just to come back and just play the game of basketball that I knew, just try to bring the grit and the grind and the energy to this team that we that I feel like we needed. And that's what I took my whole approach on. And luckily, it went my way today. Your third game back, your best one statistically so far. Did it feel like a breakthrough? Did you feel more comfortable uh, tonight than you did last week? Oh, I felt comfortable all, all three games, really. Uh, I think it was just a little bit of increase in playing time right there, you know, just get to, getting adapted with the team and just trying to build more chemistry out there on the floor with game time. And, you know, it just felt good to be out there. I guess that's tough too against MD. You know, what does that do for just getting back to the flow of things to go against a top guy like that? Man, you get put in the fire quickly. <laughs> you know, you got a real good big like that, you know, very skilled. You just try to make it as difficult as possible for him. You know, nothing easy for him. And my teammates really helped me out on the defensive end as well. So I appreciate those guys out there. You guys had a huge advantage in the game before. Obviously, this was the first game you guys had everyone available. What was like playing that part of the mid-game? Man, it felt great just to bring that energy. Off to, off to what those starters were doing out there. You know, we just try to, you know, maintain or increase the league or anything that we can do to help this team win out there. It doesn't matter if we're coming off the bench or if we're starting, we all have the same mentality going out there and that's to help help each other win, praise each other, go out there, get stops and score on the other end. Obviously, obviously it's huge energy guy on the bench. Um, Coach Blair was saying that when you guys worked out kind of before the season, you really responded to his, like, his energy that we've all seen. Um, what can you kind of tell us about working with him and what he's added to the Wizards? Man, Coach JB always brings it. He always has that energy day in and day out, and I love it. I love, I love it. You know, I feel like we need, we need people like that. We need coaches like that. That's always going to, you know, you know what you're going to get from. You're going to get that love, that passion, that energy, and he's never going to change. And that's the, that's the great thing about Coach. You just mentioned earlier that you didn't know that Trey was close to Hey, it says a lot about the confidence and, you know, me and Trez have, have, we've known each other for years. We had the same workout person with Rico High, so we've had endless battles and we still continue to have endless battles and, you know, we always push each other to do our best, to the best that we can. So just to hear that, you know, it, it means a lot to me. Does that happen often when, like, players may have, like, some input on this? Well, yeah, I don't gotta go against him as much. That's the <laughs> that's the best thing about it. But uh, you know, just taking the, just just from us playing with each other, you know, we know what we like to do. I know what he likes to do. He know what I likes to do. And you know, we try and we try and build as much as we can out there from what we do in the summer. And try and translate it to what we do now with the Wizards. What do you think about the way uh, Rui played tonight? You know, just the bulk of his best in this game. Man, Rui's been playing great, man. Uh, I think people scrutinize him too much, a little bit too much, too hard on him. But uh, you know, he's such a great player. He's so dynamic. You know, he can score from down low to making jump shots, as we've seen tonight. Defends multiple positions. You know, he's a He's an endless talent out there for us. And, you know, it feels good to see him out there doing his thing and, you know, getting the recognition that he deserves. Christos? Hey, Thomas, great game. First of all, great win. For you, how important is to be back on the floor and be so productive on both ends of the floor? Well, just being out there just really helps. And, uh, you know, I'm just locked in a lot. 
especially on the film wise. You know, I take film very seriously. I take the preparation very seriously. So for us to go out there and get this win and, you know, for me to be out there and just try and make a change on the offensive and defensive end, it means a lot to me that you can see that progression go forward. Thank you very much. Neil. Hey, TV, we, we know that, you know, on the sideline, you're everybody's biggest cheerleader on Kuzma's dunk. You were, you know, slapping the towel. What did what, what you think of Kuzma's dunk and what was your reaction to it? Man, it was big time. Yeah, I thought he was going to kick it to the corner, but he went in for the dunk and that really surprised me. And, you know, with him getting that dunk, you know, it just it just raises the level, the energy, the passion for everyone out there on the court and on the bench. So. You know me, I love I love when my teammates do something great like that. And I just had to give a full praise to them. Thanks, TB. Last question to Wayne. Hey, TB. Um, just wanted to know, you coming in and you haven't missed a beat. Um, how did you develop that mental toughness away from the game and that seamlessly transition um, to having such an effective role on the floor? Well, you have to build that mental toughness, especially going through this ACL injury. You know, a lot of times it's a lot of up and downs and at first it's a lot of downs. So you have to be mentally tough and you have to translate that into the game, especially trying to be incorporated back into the game with a team that's been playing and, you know, having their groove throughout this long time, throughout the long time that I haven't been there. So for me, it was started early when I first got the injury to try and to focus on my mental toughness and it helps. And lastly, TB, how how cool does it how cool to feel to, um how does it feel to have your team back and then with this small sample size just everybody gelling what does that let you know about the the continuity of the team it means that these that we can even get better than we already are man uh, like i said before the the amount of time that we have on this team is endless from guys that can guard multiple different positions and we can attack so so many defensive coverages because we have so many dynamic players out there so for us to gel and especially get this win tonight against this great 76ers team it means a lot to us going forward we just got to build and and keep building those great habits that we have coach says that you were the one when he went to sub you in for gas at the beginning of the game uh that you suggested he put thomas in first why did you do that um i kind of seen before the game and seeing how uh you know, MB was starting out the game early on. Um, you know, seeing that he was more so, um, you know, trying to get guys in foul trouble, um, and you know, kind of being able to uh, try to impose his will a little bit earlier um, in the post up spot. Um, so, you know, I told coaches just go with TB and Gap early on because uh, Gap got in the early foul trouble. You know, two and three um, in the first half. Um, and you know, I just wanted to keep TB with him because at the point in time, uh, TB pops a little bit more than me, so it was about spacing the floor and offense in the floor. Um, and just being able to keep him honest on um, defense end because uh, TB, like I said, TB is able to, you know, shoot the three um, and he's been shooting the three uh, longer than me a little bit more consistently. So um, it's just a smarter play for the team. Um, that's all it was about. It wasn't about anything else, but, you know, the play for the team and what was going to be the right sub at that point in time. Did you, um, did you play with Coach in, in G League at all? Yeah, that was my uh, that was my big man coach down when I was in uh, when I first got drafted in Houston. That's my first two years down in RGV. Um, so uh, me and JB got a great relationship. I've known him for years, and you know, I always kept up with him uh, through our social media. We follow each other on Instagram, and just he's a great person, man. He's a great guy to be around. He comes in with the same energy, positive every day, man. And you can't help but uh, just attract and be uh, you know connected to people like that. You know, so I'm blessed to be able to know him and. Um, best to be a part of his first win as a uh, NBA head coach. Yeah, how much you enjoyed For sure, for sure. Game of four, uh, ice bath shower after the game, man. Um, and like I said, it's just big because, like I said, man, JB has been together for a while, man. Like I said, I wasn't there when he was able to win it um, in RGV and, uh, you know, horse the championship up down there. But um, he knows my ground and, uh, and I know his as well, you know, as far as, uh, you know, us being in this league and uh, where we are today. And it's a complete blessing. So uh, for sure, just had to express that love and just, you know, um, complete, uh, you know, just overall happiness I am for him, man, for him just be able to be in that position and get a big time win versus a team like the uh, Sixers. Um, and it's also a team that he actually was uh, on the assistant um, coaching as well. You know, a lot of people don't know that as well. So it's just, that's a real big night for him.
can you make a move to suggest like the talk brand? Like, is that something you've done before, or is that is that just even that? Um, no, it's not really something that I've done before, but honestly, it's come with the uh, um, experience of the league and actually just being in the league and knowing the, you know, the roles of the game, really, man. Um, like I said, I've been in this position before uh, last year, um, which is not really, um, you know, to the extent to where I am this year. But the thing about it is, like, I, I've learned how to handle it, honestly. And, uh, you know, my voice is a little bit more, um, you know, bigger in this locker room than where I was uh, the previous year. So for a coach to be able to listen to me and, you know, take that into accountability and run with it, and it, it played out great for us tonight, man. It's just, you know, goes to show you that, you know, I, I know um, a little bit of what I'm talking about with this game, and, uh, you know, I could do it with, you know, the best of the best, just like everybody else, you know, just the same respect, simple as that. Um, but, no, it's not something that I've, uh, I've been accustomed to doing because I, I love playing. You know, who doesn't love playing? Who doesn't love P, you know? But it's not about me. It's about, you know, the overall factor of our team, so. Sorry, this was the first game you guys had everyone available, and you guys outscored their bench by quite a bit. What was it like being part of the second unit? Everyone's back. You guys have to get that to the full team. It was just fun, man. Um, as you've seen, uh, a lot of guys came into the game and contributed tonight, man. It was just fun to be able to just be out there and play freely and just flow and you know, just let things happen. I don't think anybody was out there searching for anything. I don't think nobody was out there just, you know, looking for, you know, how they're playing. We were just out there playing free basketball and whoever was open or whoever made the right cut, the right play, that's who we uh, reward with the ball. And as far as on the defensive end, um, we had a game plan of what we wanted to do coming into the game, and we did it to the highest of, you know, our ability, um, you know, JB said before the game coming in uh, and he was right. You know, nobody, he didn't expect nobody to go out there and be perfect because, uh, you know, we didn't expect him to be perfect, you know, but at the same time, he expected us to have perfect effort. You know, you can't, you can't coach effort, you know, so he expected us to have great effort and play with the right mindset and to play with the right energy. And that's what we did tonight. Came out with a big win. You guys held the fire there with seven points. You've given this team a lot of trouble each other the past few years. What was the key to kind of make it through? He didn't get you there. Um, honestly, it was not only just about him, but it was about a lot of those guys that have there. Maxi, him, um, Cork Myers. We wanted to make sure those guys didn't come in here and have another big game as they did the first time they came in here. Um, we know what MB was going to try to do. We know he was going to uh, post up and, you know, he's going to get his foul calls and he's going to get the shots that he's going to get. You know, we're, we're not, um, you know, nothing new to us. But at the same time, we knew that the other guys is really – uh, the reason that they really came out and won that game um, because, you know, Tobias had 20-plus last game. Maxie had 16 or, or plus that game, man. And uh, Court Moss had a big game as well, you know. So we let all the other factors around it come in the game and, and hurt us and, and become a big factor, um, you know, to what went forth for them winning the game. So we just want to make sure we come in here and we take them out of that and make sure that, you know, they didn't come in here and have another big night um, and, you know, go off to them winning a huge game. What were some things that uh, you might have learned from JB when you were playing with the Vipers that was especially impactful in your development? Um, everything, man. Uh, as far as like, um, you know, the the will of working the league, man. Uh, JB's been he wasn't like I said he wasn't a head coach when I was down there. He was a, you know, basically like the bigs coach. Um, you know, basically just coaching the bigs on you know. Uh, post catcher, different things like that, man. So just look at his caliber of work, uh, how he's came from, you know, being in that position to a head position down there to going on being with the Sixers and to, you know, up here with us and to the point where he was in his head coaching spot in the midst of fighting out before the game, man. And he went out there and he relished in the moment, man. And he went out there and led us to um, a great game plan and ultimately ended up winning the game for us, man. But just in general, um, I connect to JB, man, just because, our paths are kind of the same as that way, man. Just having to grind and work and, you know, bust our tail to be able to um, get to the position that we're at. And it, it's a complete blessing, man. So, um, you know, just hats off to him. And like I said, I'm extremely proud of, uh, for him, man. Just for him to, you know, come out here and coach the way he coached, man. And like I said, he came up with a big win versus a team that he not only worked for, um, you know, but like I said, it's his first time ever been in this position, man. So that's big. You got to you got to register those type of things, man, because you never know when it's going to be his turn to actually be sitting in that seat, you know, full time. Neil? Hey, Trev. Um, not sure if you've had the chance to play on MLK Day in the past. Obviously, the Wizards do a lot. You had the warm-up shirts and everything. What did it mean to you um, to be able to play on this day? Um, it's a complete uh, honor for sure um, to be able to play on this day and just being able to uh, – 
um, you know, really stand out there and, uh, you know, be unified as to, you know, all the things that Martin Luther King kind of tried to stand for. And, you know, just not only for one color, you know, he wanted equality for everybody in the world, man. And that's big. But the thing about it is it just kind of sucks because at the same time, I don't, you know, want the game that we played today to kind of just be a distraction. Now, we're still dealing with a lot of the things that Martin Luther King has, was fighting for, you know, years and years even before we was here, man. So it just goes to show you, man, it, it hasn't, you know, completely come to, you know, the the stand that he really wanted to happen, man. Um, you know, look at all the police brutality and everything that we're still going through um, and people still losing their lives just off nonsense, man. Um, so at the same time, uh, it's a great honor, but at the same time, we, we still have yet to really live out his message and what he really wanted um, us to do as people in this world. Thanks, Tress. Last question to Christos. Hey, Tres, hope you're doing well. Great game, great win, first of all. Uh, for for you guys to see Kuz bring so so much intensity on both ends, be so impactful on both ends, and having that consistency, what what does it mean for for the whole team? Um, like I said, honestly, I don't really think it, it's more so about you know one player, but um, he stepped up his game a, a tremendous deal in this past couple of months. Man, he's worked his tail off and just um, coming in and relishing in the moment of you know all the different ups and downs that we're having throughout the season. Um, I think he understands the position that he's in and um, he's just taking full advantage of it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we know what he brings to the floor on both ends of the floor. Um, and, you know, like I said, we're all going to do it as a collective group. It's not really just about one uh, specific player um, or about, you know, how well one guy is doing. Uh, we're going to have to do it together as a group. But like I said, the things that he brings to the game and the way that he plays is definitely one of those um, contagious type things when he's flying all around and, you know, getting multiple um, defense and offensive rebounds, you know, and then he's um, hit some tough shots, man. So it, it's big. Um, but at the same time, like I said, we're doing it in a collective group. And I think the biggest thing that you can take away from um, definitely how we play tonight is that we didn't really care you know, who was on the, you know, receiving end of uh, of all the things that was kind of going well for us, really.